What is up, guys? Welcome to another edition of the Market Marauder Show. Be the market one trade at a time. All right, going to be coming to you with some more crypto news. Hope everybody's having a great week out there. Uh, able to lock in some profits and watching this volatile market continue to fluctuate. All right, so we'll be talking about uh, some stuff that I came across that I'm going to be giving you information on. First thing first being El Salvador adopts Bitcoin. So the president of El Salvador was at the Bitcoin 2021 conference this weekend that was hosted in Miami. A lot of heavy hitters, a lot of people who are invested in Bitcoin and the whole cryptocurrency wave. Basically, all the heavy hitters and some other people were down in Miami talking about Bitcoin, one being the president of El Salvador, who says he wants to adopt Bitcoin as legal tender. So uh, 20 years ago, El Salvador replaced its domestic currency, uh, the colon, uh, with U.S. dollar. Now the country's president uh, wants to take what seems to be an equally drastic step with his nation's money. He wants to declare Bitcoin as legal tender along with the dollar. Uh, but in fact, is a, uh, but it is in fact a major step. Uh, the significance, uh, the adoption of Bitcoin as legal tender depends on the meanings, uh, the meaning he is ascribing to the term. A uh, few things in monetary economics are more foggy than the concept of legal tender. Um, so it's very interesting because he wants Bitcoin to be alongside. Um, the dollar basically for the country's uh, legal tender or accepted currency, I guess should be the other way to say it. Um, definitely very interesting. Um, it'll be the first country to do so. Um, but, you know, I don't know if Bitcoin is the right coin to do so, um, especially considering that there are people who are just acquiring Bitcoin to hold it um, just for its face value to hedge inflation. Um, so its stored value is good now, but if you have people, you know, going back and forth transaction, uh, using it for transactions, it may be too expensive at this point um, in Bitcoin's life to do so for a legal tender. But um, definitely a very interesting, um, you know, point moving forward. And I think he definitely has the power to, you know, revolutionize his country by doing that. I think it's a very interesting thought and it could be used as a case study moving forward on how um, countries could use the adoption of Bitcoin. So there's always got to be a person who's the first, uh, whether that's, you know, talking about Bitcoin or talking about, you know, the legalization of like cannabis and things like that. There's always got to be a first person that's a use case to prove the validity of whether it can work or whether it can't work. So um, definitely very interesting, um, you know, take that he has on uh, Bitcoin and crypto in general. So going to the next one, uh, especially talking about this one, El Salvador's residents are split on Bitcoin adoption bill. Uh, some El Salvadoran, El Salvadorian residents are excited by the thought that Bitcoin being treated as legal tender, while others are concerned uh, that it may be a tool for corrupt officials. So uh, some people are saying, you know, this could go on the dark side or can definitely help a lot of people. So, um, you know, it's, you know, very easy to see why the country is split on this. Um, and definitely, I think um, they're going to be a case study on how governments can handle uh, using Bitcoin um in the real world so it says this is a very good because bitcoin is decentralized and nobody has control of bitcoin and the dollar is in the hands of governments so that is kind of what the reason behind going with bitcoin was um that he was basically saying but i don't know uh moving forward with this uh it's definitely going to be interesting to see um how this works and if it's really you know a fair utopian sort of transition uh of currencies now they're still going to be having the u.s dollar uh but as we know that is currently struggling but um you know definitely going to be interested to see if this helps the country or if this uh you know does not help the country next um Biden's national security advisor uh, sees crypto role in cyber attacks as priority for G7 and NATO. So Jake Sullivan, uh, the crypto uh, currency challenge lies at the core of ransomware attacks. Um, so Jake Sullivan, U.S. president, uh, 
Joe Biden's national security advisor highlighted the role of crypto and cyber attacks as priority for upcoming G7 and North Atlantic Treaty Organization summits this month. Um, he says the cryptocurrency challenge lies at its core of how ransomware attacks play out. Sullivan said at the White House press um, briefing Monday, uh, members of the group of seven and NATO must increase their preparedness against such attack and share information about current threats, Sullivan said. Ransomware is a national security priority, particularly uh, as it relates to ransomware attacks on critical infrastructure in the United States, he said. Uh, Sullivan's comments follow the number of attacks of cyber attacks on the U.S. infrastructure, including one uh, of the Colonial Pipeline payments uh, system last month that shut down the fuel pipeline uh, that runs from Texas, New Jersey, prompting concerns of gas shortages in dozen states. Um, so I was definitely one of those states that was affected by that. It was crazy. A lot of people were rushing to the gas, you know, station, um, you know, filling up just crazy amounts of gas, filling up barrels to put gasoline in, you know, it was just outrageous what was going on. Uh, so, uh, attackers linked, uh, to the Russia based dark side group were paid about 4.4 million in Bitcoin or BTC, uh, of which 2.3 million has been recovered by the FBI. Uh, the G7 summit of leaders from Canada, France, Germany, Italy, Japan, and the UK, and the US will uh, take place on June 11th in Cornwall, UK, and NATO summit uh, will be held in Brussels on June 14th. Uh, so definitely very interesting um, how cryptocurrency is being involved in a lot of these things that are going on in the world, um, and also just looking at the growth of cybersecurity and how much it is needed as a major for um, these different jobs. So uh, definitely if you are going to college, cybersecurity is the way to go because there are plenty of jobs out there for you uh, that could definitely help, um, you know, security, especially when it comes to uh, internet and infrastructure um, has definitely grown in popularity as time has gone on. Um, this is definitely a growing field. Uh, cybersecurity is like a buzzword at this point in time, um, but there's tons of money out there uh, to be made if you're good at it. Um, and if you're not good at it, you know, it's never too late to learn. There are a lot of coding classes and stuff you can take online uh, for free that you can learn different coding. I think Google has uh, one where you can actually get a certificate and, you know, get a job doing that. But definitely a lot of growth in the crypto crypto world as well as the cybersecurity world. Next, Amazon looks to hire uh, blockchain staffers with experience of DeFi. So looks like Amazon's trying to get into the blockchain and cryptocurrency world. So Amazon searching uh, for staff experience in decentralized finance, according to job ad post uh, for a blockchain head of product. Uh, the candidate will have a track record delivering outstanding products at scale in emerging spaces and is passionate about blockchain, uh, distributed systems, and cloud scale software. That's what the ad said. Um, ideally, you'll have experience delivering products or innovations in the blockchain space, in particular DeFi or traditional financial services. Uh, Amazon has been subject to speculation. Um, it was looking for staff to build digital payment token, uh, which appeared to be part of a merchant payment initiative to be tested uh, or test driven in Mexico. So they it looks like they're trying to get into crypto uh, slowly, but not, you know, on the radar. Uh, the blockchain product leads uh, lead is part of Amazon managed blockchain, which recently added support for Ethereum, uh, the public blockchain that is original home of DeFi, Amazon managed blockchain, uh, started out as internet giants version of the enterprise blockchain cloud offering, rather like Microsoft's Azure blockchain. Uh, it is a way to, it is a way for companies to quickly spin up uh, private or permission blockchains in the cloud. Um, if nothing else, it's clear DeFi has caught Amazon's attention. Uh, the company name checked uh, DeFi on three occasions. Experience is decentralized finance, a plus. Uh, the ad says, then along with a familiarity with Ethereum and Hyperledger Fabric. Um, so 
This is going to be Amazon Managed Blockchain, or AMB for short, uh, is the fully managed service that accelerates customers' ability to create and leverage scalable blockchain technology for current and innovative businesses, uh, use cases across DeFi, uh, supply chain, financial services, uh, identity, and more. So definitely interesting to see some more updates on that um, and what Amazon's direction is for that moving forward. Next, we're going to talk about Revolt uh, is adding Dogecoin to its crypto offering. Uh, so this will be the third, 30th crypto available on uh, Revolt. Uh, so UK, UK-based UK digital banking service Revolt added Dogecoin uh, to its offering in response to the widespread demand for its users. Uh, it is the 30th token to be made available on Revolt. Uh, the fintech announced via email on Tuesday. Um, so Revolt is adding new tokens every Tuesday and its program started June 1st uh, with an additional or with an addition of eight tokens, including Algorand and Polygon. One of the most popular user requests over the past couple of months has been to add Dogecoin and we have answered the call. So Ed Cooper uh, had noted um, Revolt's head of crypto um, said in an email. So uh, Revolt began offering uh, crypto adding in 2017 coming in criticism uh, for not allowing customers to withdraw their holdings to other exchanges uh, that has changed with the beta release of bitcoin uh, withdrawals as many as three addresses for some of its uk customers um, subject to take up the service will be extended to other cryptocurrencies and customers uh in other markets in the coming months so definitely uh some growth uh, and another win for dogecoin and lastly we're going to talk about here um world economic forum hopes to explain DeFi for regulators with white papers so uh the world economic forum's new white paper is meant to act as a toolkit for regulators looking to understand the decentralized finance sector um, so when this is released, I think it's a good paper for everybody to read, if you're, especially if you're new um, to cryptocurrency in general, because it will explain a lot of different things, um, not just, you know, for the World Economic Forum, but when they make papers like this, they try to publish them in layman's terms, so it's not full of all the... I guess technical details, but it has it's very technical, but they do explain the technicality of it. So, um, you know, I encourage it's probably really public information, so I encourage everybody to try to seek this paper out. Uh, decentralized finance or DeFi is promising, uh, but poses novel risk to financial sector and its own users. Uh, a new World Economic Forum white paper said uh, the white paper published early Tuesday uh, is meant to act as a toolkit to inform policymakers about the different aspects of the relatively young subsector within the broader ecosystem. The WEF uh, does not intend to recommend specific policy actions for regulations uh, or regulators. However, uh, the document is said to, to be more focused on describing what issues DeFi may address, as well as draw attention to certain areas on which regulators may need to catch up. So basically putting everybody on a flat plane saying, okay, this is what we're all agreeing upon, what DeFi is. So this DeFi will raise further questions about whether regula regulators have the proper tools uh, to access evolving market activity and how they can assert jurisdiction over a set of technologies and stakeholders that is intrinsically borderless and global. Um, the WEF is latest uh, intergovernmental entity to address DeFi after the Financial Action Task Force, or FATF for short, um, an international money laundering watchdog published uh, proposed regulatory guidance around DeFi earlier this year. Regulators are increasingly paying attention to the space, particularly amid the recent crypto bull market. Um, so they're basically trying to understand how it works uh, so that they can make rules around it um, and, you know, mitigate some of the other stuff that's going on. Uh, so, yeah, definitely interesting. The world of crypto is continuing to grow as time goes on. Um, very interesting to see that, you know, more people and institutions are starting to get into uh, crypto as well as, you know, or uh, government organizations starting to jump into crypto. So. 
definitely, you know, if you're interested in learning about crypto, I encourage everybody to go seek out some information on it. Um, it's very interesting stuff. Uh, it all works, you know, in different ways, the blockchain, crypto, uh, NFTs, if anything you need to know, uh, make sure you go seek out the information um, because, you know, you don't want people just telling you about it um, and then you be confused because I know when I started off, it was very confusing to me. Uh, but the more I dove into it, the more I liked it, the more interested I was, the more information that I learned um, and seeked out. Um, and, you know, there are a lot of people out there who will lead you wrong, but, you know, there's also a lot of information out there that is right. So for me, it was kind of a mixture between doing it myself like getting into cryptocurrency, buying crypto, um, getting on the different exchanges, making videos about it, um, reading the white papers of the different cryptocurrencies, seeing the volatility of the market, um, basically immersing yourself into crypto to me is the best way to learn about crypto. Um, so hopefully this episode helped you all, um, you know, we'll be trying to get more of the crypto news, uh, but you know, good luck to everybody out there trading and I'll see you guys next time. Peace. Thank you.